So let's go over what happened in Cheat Skill Episode 8. Our man Yuya grew his harem once again, which this time it goes in a persona teacher student relationship direction where the possibilities truly are endless. Though, to everyone's credit, the other teachers saying, don't go with this deadbeat, she'll ruin your life. The other girls in around his age basically saying, no, he's mine. So that's pretty extreme for an episode in general. Like, it's not often you just boldly have a teacher so unapologetically say, I'm down bad, cook for me, clean for me, I'm nothing, but I got my body. But then they escalate it further with him fighting a bear with his bare hands, suplexes the thing, and as far as we can tell, gets cooked up for dinner. Poor Yogi Bear, he didn't realize the picnic basket he was stealing from was worst case scenario. And we also had a rescue scene when the princess gets jumped by Luna, and now we have that whole plot line going on there. This is the greatest anime ever made. This is hands down the stupidest, the silliest, the most outrageous episode of Isolive, but it's probably my favorite episode. They were, they had a checklist and they ran through every trope, every cliche, and they made it so damn amusing and I honestly loved it. Full live reaction to this what the hell am I watching episode is available on my Patreon if you want to see my full uncut thoughts. Like, they seriously had a checklist. Like, they went hard at three different points with the animation. One was the provocative, the more, oh my god, they are refusing to let go of that chest. They had actually some pretty good animation when it came to the cooking. It was brief, but it was pretty good. You had the animation with the bear. I thought we were going to have like a Golden Kamui Season 1 bear, but no, they hand drew that, and honestly, it was pretty well animated. Hell, even if you add in the quick little action scene at the end, it was pretty good. Like this, it's kind of funny to think about. As someone who really hasn't hated the production of this show, I honestly think this was the best produced episode, yet it's also the stupidest episode, and I just love what they did. So, I mean, this really did feel like a Persona situation. Anyone who's played, like, Persona 5 or anything like that, I mean, just the fact that you can pretty much date anyone you want in that game, though they don't really show anything romantic other than you get in a relationship in those games, but at the end of the day, this is kind of what I feel like if, pers if like, Persona was left to be unhinged, just being like, okay, we're gonna make a goofy character if you wanted to to be your wife who go ahead. And I love the fact that they weren't, they didn't do what a lot of these shows would do, where they allude of that, ooh, is it gonna be a teacher student relationship? It's taboo, we can't do this, the age different, the power imbalance, right? This show just said, no, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use the cliches, we're gonna say, bitch please, this girl has no shame. She literally had a foodgasm and said, marry me, not once, like three or four times in this episode. And the fact that you actually had teachers in the background saying, boy, do not toss your life away for this deadbeat. She's, she literally has never had a boyfriend and she's just mooching off you. You have so much possibilities, my brother. Just please do anything better. The one friend who got used as like a lab rat to test poisonous mushrooms, climb up cliff sides, just being completely envious of not only the fact that he apparently has such a casual connection with the princess of the school, the fact that his body is literally made of abs of steel and is just envious from top to bottom of his life. The fact that they so just casually, like, I literally said it out loud, and the fact that when I think of, oh, they're probably gonna have him fight a bear, over 50% confident, when I predict things like that, it could actually occur. Sometimes when you watch anime, you think, oh, what about this funny scene that they could do? But you know there's no possibilities because the show's not going to go out that outlandish. But let's rewind a bit. Our boy's fought biker gangs, he's fought thugs, he's fought robbers or punched models. He just has done a lot of things. He saved people from fiery buildings. And because of that insane luck stat, you know both bad and good things are going to be a combination. But you can't tell me with a straight face, it is not amusing watching him suplex a damn bear. Especially when the person he's rescuing already proposed to him in a forcefully engaged moment and the fact that it just makes him look even cooler to the school. I honestly didn't think in terms of the whole classroom or at least the whole school that's out here would probably think any higher of him than they already did when he soloed the bike gang. But the fact that he just suplexed a bear and they just casually are like, yeah, we're going to cook it. I'm like, what are we? Are we in Konosuba where Megami's just cooking all the ducks and everything? Like, this is just savage. Like... Poor bear was just hungry, let him go, put him in the right area, but no, like, this school's ridiculous. They let the teachers drink on the school vacations, or the school trips. They basically, you know, they, they don't arrest the teachers for admitting that they want to have uh, intimate relationships with their students. You casually just, you know, you, you know, kids almost getting ate by a bear, or potentially being tortured by other students to eat poisonous mushrooms. 
nature of the beast, and I love it. I think it's stupid. I think this is hands down the stupidest episode, but it is hands down the best episode for pure entertainment, and I unapologetically love it. And maybe it's a bit of an ironic clickbait of, you know, greatest anime ever but you can't deny it's absolutely comedy gold. So we didn't get a lot in terms of the fantasy world. We got a, a few minutes, but honestly, they made the time limit that they had with that world pretty relevant. So we got a taste of his teleportation back home when he went to feed Knight, of course, which was nice to see. But now we are going heading off to the kingdom, which obviously he had to wait till he was at his vacation time period because it would take so many days to get there. Now, with his teleportation, once he gets to the kingdom, he can teleport to and from once he's in that world, right? It'll be like a little fast travel. And Luna, being the assassin we meet last week, attempts to kill the princess, which Knight tries to shield our boy from because, obviously, it would hurt to know that this new connection is actually now trying to kill someone that you're indebted to, or at the very least, are trying to protect. And I like the fact that, yeah, logically, should the princess just be with a smile, say, you know what, this person tried to kill me, but this, that, we're gonna go, you know, just let you go off. Probably not, but this show is silly. Like, it, it is silly, but it has a lot of really charming aspects about it, whether it's the way they use the power mechanics or the way they write a character who suffered into being a more likable person and, you know, getting what he honestly deserves in a lot of way. The fact is, this show is silly, and this whole episode was silly, so the fact that she's just like, you know what, my future fiancé? I'm more worried if this girl is a lover of yours, so let's go, let's just chill. And then the knight of her is just like, princess, what the hell, you're just running in the damn forest and screwing around and teleporting away, what the hell? I just feel for these characters sometimes. I think there's serious elements about the plot that I quite like, I think there's a lot of ludicrous elements about the plot that I think are hilarious and entertaining, but at the end of the day, I, I unapologetically love this show. It is so entertaining, it has moments of badassery, has moments of, like, you can look at the backstory and the characterization of how he suffered, is really emotional. The world building, the power system, I like it, it is fun. It honestly feels like, in a way, you're, like, taking all the tropes and trends and either twisting them in a really positive way to be more exciting than the cliches, or in the case of this episode, what they mostly did was they, they fondled, they grabbed their way through all the cliches and basically said, let's make it as silly and goofy and not shy away from the, does the teacher actually have feelings? No, she fully admitted it. Or we're just going to say, we're going to show you two minutes of these girls in the changing room. And you're just like, bro, this show is basically doing what all these other shows allude to or kind of tiptoe around and say, you know what? Gloves are off. We're just going to be stupid. And honestly, I, I had fun with it. It was so silly, but I had fun with it. But that's just my feelings of East Leave episode eight. I'm, I'm unironically excited for episode nine after this one. It was so stupid and I really, really had a fun time watching it. Let me know what you thought though down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring that bell, of course, and get notified when I upload on the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction to this hilarious episode is available on my Patreon. And while there you can also get a video shout out like jad ivy ortega jackso 23 and jared fan are getting today so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one